Tonight on CTV News, Canterbury Police execute four search warrants as part of the investigation into the collapse of the CTV building. Options are put on the table for flood affected residents and a new way to combat earthquake related stress. Broadcasting across Canterbury, from the CTV studio, this is First at Five. And good evening. Breaking late this afternoon, Canterbury Police have executed four search warrants as part of the ongoing investigation into the collapse of the CTV building. Detective Superintendent Peter Reeves says the warrants form part of an ongoing investigation. Documents and items of interest they say have been seized. In September last year, police announced they would be advancing a criminal investigation after assessing a large amount of information regarding the collapse of the CTV building during the February 2011 earthquakes that claimed the lives of 115 people. To today's other big story now, and the Ministry of Social Development has pleaded not guilty to charges over the deadly Ashburton work and income shootings. Today, the Ministry of Social Development has pleaded not guilty to a charge brought by WorkSafe New Zealand for the fatal shooting at an Ashburton Winds office last September. The ministry pleaded today at the Wellington District Court, saying it didn't fail to keep its employees safe at work after the shooting that led to the deaths of two staff and injuring of two others. However, WorkSafe says the ministry is at fault and has broken Section 6 of the Health and Safety in Employment Act. The judge remanded the case until August for another preliminary hearing, which is expected to take up to two weeks. 48-year-old Russell John Tully has been charged with the murders of Peg Noble and Susan Lee Cleveland and seriously wounding Lindy Curtis on September 1st last year. Another staff member, Kim Adams, was shot at as she ran out the back door. A date for Tully's trial is yet to be set. So how will the Christchurch City Council deal with flood-affected residents? Well, there are now three options on the table. There are new options too, and the public has less than a month to have its say. The council has yet another option to deal with the flood risk in the Flockton Basin. The works are needed to drain floodwaters around the Dudley Creek area into the Avon River, land which is now prone to severe flooding, having been compromised by earthquakes and have seen serious outwashes since. Over the last few months, the council has developed three recommendations following public consultation late last year. Two of them will channel floodwaters through Dudley Creek and under the adjacent Shirley Red Zone. But a third one, known as Option C, will follow Stapleton's Road, Medway and Randall Streets to the river. How this will impact road users as construction takes place is one consultation the public will have to take into account, as works will take two years to complete. From this Wednesday, the Council is holding three community drop-in meetings in a consultation booklet, which are all available online. People have until the 8th of July to provide feedback, with the Council making a decision in August. It's back again. NASA's Long Range Space Telescope has flown into town to get the best photos of space from the Southern Hemisphere. Chelsea Daniels reports. NASA's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, otherwise known as SOFIA, will be operating out of Christchurch International Airport for the next six weeks. We're here for uh, some observations of the, the galactic center and the Magellanic clouds that we can't see from the northern hemisphere. We're here to uh, observe this Pluto occultation, which is, which is in the area. This is the aircraft's second deployment to Christchurch, where the team are able to see things they wouldn't normally be able to see back home in California. Flying from Christchurch enables Sophia to study the centre of our Milky Way galaxy, young stars, star-forming regions and supernova remnants in the southern Milky Way. We're here because the nights are long and the uh, air is uh, clear this time of year, um, as observing in the winter time is best for us in the northern hemisphere. It's, it's, it's best conditions for us in the winter when we're down here. Sophia is designed to observe the infrared universe. The infrared telescope run by the German Aerospace Centre inside the SOFIA aircraft is one of a kind, and it's had on the expensive side. I'd say it's priceless because it's the only one in the world. The only one. But uh, um, just for, from, from, from a manufacturing and building point of view, it took us uh, some 80 million uh, euros to, to uh, build this. SOFIA will be making a total of 17 flights during its deployment in Christchurch starting this Wednesday.
Being the largest airborne observatory in the world, Sophia is capable of making observations that are impossible for even the largest and highest ground-based telescopes. There are lots of uh, um, interesting questions uh, concerning our environment and, 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 and where we come from and, and where we go to. So if the project was to lose funding, would the team be able to sell off the aircraft? <laughs> I, I think it would be a difficult plane to sell, yeah. yeah. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. And still to come here on CTV News, a new tool in the fight against earthquake-related stress and the global trotters are back in town. And welcome back to CTV News, streaming live at ctv.co.nz. Well, there's a new tool in the fight against earthquake-related stress. The All Right campaign team have developed a cell phone app they hope the smartphone generation will pick up on. A little helping hand in your pocket. The All Right campaign has just launched a new smartphone app designed to help Cantabrians with their mental health and well-being following the earthquakes. And the organisation's health specialist says it's another way to engage with the public through the use of technology. Well, the app's all about um, taking the All Right campaign into, into some new places. Um, our, our message is that we want to start a conversation about uh, how people are, a conversation about well-being and the app's an opportunity for people to have something on their phone that can kind of remind them to have well-being front and centre of their lives. A lot of work has gone in to make this initiative possible. Designed so each day app users can set up a daily reminder to achieve an objective to ensure good mental health and well-being. And she says it's also about having fun too. Little challenges each day, little mini missions, and um, they're pretty achievable. I've been playing it for a couple of weeks now, and uh, sometimes it feels really good just to, to think, oh, OK, that was fun, and it's done something for my well-being. Back in February, research from the organisation showed a number of improvements to stressed Cantabrians about earthquake-related problems. However, there are still some challenges out there for residents, with around 15% of respondents saying it's even more difficult to find somewhere appropriate to live. That's up 3%. And respondents say they rarely keep physically active on a regular basis, sitting at just under 50%, down just over 5%. But Lucy hopes it'll help with some challenges for people who use their phone frequently. Some people really are very attached to their phones and so this will be a way of, of um, getting them to prioritise those little things. The mini missions are split into five different categories. Things to improve your mind, get more active and also to slow down and savour the moment. But she says using mobile technology is just one way to get the message out there. We won't be going completely to digital because we know that not everyone's got the kind of phone um, and not everyone is, uh, is, is focused on apps. But it will, it will widen the conversation. You know, we want everyone to be involved in the conversation. So we will, um, we will use the kind of language and the kind of uh, processes that will get people involved. And this is certainly a step forward for um, bringing new people into the conversation. And she says it works well for her. She set herself a few goals in the weekends at the football. <laughs> yes, now you can practice all the five ways at the under-20 football uh, because I learnt the national anthem of Mali sounds a particular way. I um, took notice of some incredible football school skills. You know, it's uh, you have to climb up to row whatever it is that's that's being active. It's a uh, and because now I'm in a habit of counting these things, you know, it, it, it actually, being mindful of what you're doing does make a difference. So I thought I'd try the app and take on one of the challenges. Today's mini mission for me is to share a little love with a random act of kindness. So I've got here some flash chocolates to give out to the people of Christchurch. Trying out a new app from the All Right campaign and my mission for today is to share the love by giving a random act of kindness. So I've got a chocolate here for you today. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That would be lovely. No worries. Well, you have a great day, okay? I'll take one. Thank you. So would you like to take one as well? <laughs> thank you very much. I've got a chocolate here for you if you'd like to take oh, one. I'll take a chocolate. Thank you. Nice. You have a great day. You too. Thank you very much. No worries. There you go. On. Fantastic. Awesome. You have a great day. Cheers. Oh, one. Lovely. Thank yeah. you very much. No worries at all. You have a great day. You too. Cheers. See thank you. Later. Got some chocolate here for you. Oh, oh yeah. Well, thank you. I'll have no, this. I've got it for you as well. Thank so you. just help yourself. Grab thank one there. You. Why not? There you go. Easy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Very good day. We'll see you.
So I've only got two chocolates left, so I have to give them away to someone, and I've just got the people for it. I've got Rosie, who's on work experience with us, so one's for you. Thank Enjoy you. that, hopefully that gets better too. And one for you, Alex, as well. Can you grab it while you're, there we go. Oh, there he goes. Look at that, fantastic. And there we go, my random act of kindness is done. So, mission complete. The All Right app is available for free on Apple and Android devices. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. If only you knew what he was really like. Well, a group of students have jumped to the aid of Ronald McDonald House by raising money to get solar panels on its roof. Chelsea Daniels explains. A group of Christchurch Uni students are fundraising to install solar panels on the Ronald McDonald House South Island. The project aims to save the charity an estimated $2 million over the next 25 years. The 10 students met at the Connecting Young Leaders Conference in early June and all came away with the same goal, to make a difference in Christchurch. Kendra spoke in front of the City Council last week, pitching the idea and getting a great response from the Mayor as well as councillors. There's a, a high cost of living in Christchurch and we wanted to address this and affect as many people as possible. Um, we discovered Ronald McDonald House South Island, their most significant property cost is electricity and if we installed a solar system on their roof it would save them two million dollars over 25 years. I found out you can speak at the public forum at the City Council um, and so that was suggested to me by a councillor, um, went forward and had an amazing response and particularly um, the Mayor herself um, wanting to hear more about the project and wanting to support Support it um, was really encouraging um, and we're hoping lots more people in Canterbury, um, businesses and workplaces and individuals will want to be involved as well. The team has partnered with Christchurch owned and operated Ina Solar who has offered to provide materials at a low cost. The group will need to get a minimum of $20,000 by the end of this month to set up the solar panel system, but hope for the full $72,000 to save the charity $2 million over the next 25 years. We are asking businesses or workplaces or individuals to sponsor $500 um, for a solar panel for the project. Um, so they get a lot of benefits out of this as well, other than being a good news project, supporting a local charity, um, Green Energy, um, and their, don their one-off donation will help um, the charity obviously for years to come and will continue to um, invest in the charity. But it's not all about the big bucks. The group has started a Give a Little fundraising page and are grateful for any help that they can get. Through researching fundraising sites, we decided on the Give a Little site, um, which is a great site. It uh, is sponsored by the Spark Foundation and so gives 100% of the funds raised to the charity and that was really important to us um, and the Ronald McDonald House. Matthew Mark, CEO of the Ronald McDonald House South Island, said he couldn't be more grateful for the work the young group is doing. This sort of thing is absolutely critical for us. Um, you know, being a charity means that every dollar that we get across our threshold is, is tr guarded jealously. And if we've got an opportunity to be able to, to save a dollar so that we can invest it into our mission in another way, then that's what we're going to get quite excited about. And obviously for the project that we're looking at here, this is a project that's just going to continue to keep on going, giving as well, which means that year on year we're going to see savings for us from an operational point of view, and that's going to enable us to deliver those funds or we'll put those funds back into our programs and, and doing what we love doing. This building alone housed 763 families just last year, with 1,200 guest visits and a lot of those families coming back for recurring stays. Just to, as an idea as to the volume of people that we get through, we had 32,000 heads on pillows through the, the, the year last year, so it's quite a significant amount of people. If you would like to help the Young Leaders and the Ronald McDonald House South Island, please visit their fundraising page. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. The Harlem Globe Trotters have been in the city over the past few days at Horncastle Arena, and sports reporter Gordon Finlater caught up with them over the weekend. On Saturday, some of the team came down to Aranui High School to show off their skills to a few lucky fans, as well as pass on their knowledge to some of the school's aspiring ball players. One of those globetrotters looking to pass on a message to the youngsters was too tall, showing size is no boundary to being a globetrotter. I've been my size. As you can see, I'm not that tall. I'm five foot two. I'm the shortest globe trotter in history. So being able to inspire kids that's not going to grow 
to be some of my teammates' height. You know, it's a blessing to see that smile on that face. When they see me, I give them hope. They say, well, if you talk a door, I can do it. After seeing the Globetrotters on Scooby-Doo as a youngster, Too Tall was driven to get himself into the team. I started when I was six. I started playing organized basketball at nine. And as I got older, I started realizing, OK, I could, I could be a professional basketball player. You know, but I realized I wasn't going to be that tall. So I had to work on extra, 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 extra stuff. You know what I mean? Like difficult shots so I could make, so I could be successful. Too Tall got called up to the Globetrotters after impressing for their rivals, the Washington Capitals, while other players, including Thunder, made their way to the team by other means. I was, they have an annual draft. Like some of us was drafted in an um, annual draft they have. Uh, and in 2007, it started with Ant Atkinson. He was the first player to be drafted by Harlem Globetrotters, and I was drafted in 2013. It's highlight real moments uh -oh. that make this side so entertaining. Each player on the Globetrotters roster brings their own piece of individuality to the side. Everybody has something unique about themselves. You know, I have a long, a long shots I like to do. Um, I set two Guinness World Records and I'm known for my half flying dunks. That's how I got the name Thunder. The objective for the day, though, was giving local youngsters a chance to interact with and see the stars in action, something they're sure to remember forever. I was pretty cool in there, one, one in a lifetime opportunity to see these guys. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Eh? Yeah. I even got shown a trick or two myself. Gordon Findlater, CTV Sport. He looks very proud of himself, doesn't he? Well, still to come, Gordon returns with more sports news. And will it snow in Christchurch? Jared has the region's weather as well. And welcome back to CTV News. Just a quick reminder, Lynch returns to the channel tonight at 8.30. It's Port Hill residence time with uh, Labour's... Ruth Dyson and Nationals Nook Kuraka. That's at 8.30 tonight right here on CTV. Well, Gordon's standing by at the news desk now with a wrap-up of the weekend's sport action. Geraldine's Hayden Padden well and truly stomped his mark onto the World Rally stage over the weekend, finishing second at the Rally of Sardinia in Italy. Padden made history on the first day of the event, grabbing a string of stage wins to lead the event after day one. Day two saw Padden extend his lead over world rally champion Sebastian Ogier before a spin handed the lead to the Frenchman. Padden's day almost struck disaster when a huge rock broke his Hyundai's gearbox in the day's penultimate stage. Padden was then forced to limp through the day's final stage, but still managed to hold on to second spot. Day three saw the Kiwi consolidate that position and banked his best drive in the WRC to date. The podium position is sure to be a huge boost for the talented driver, who now moves on to the Rally of Poland early next month. Well, two legends of the game ended their Crusaders careers on a high when Richie McCaw and Dan Carter helped the Crusaders defeat the Brumbies 37 points to 24 in Canberra. Saturday night's match was the last in red and black for a string of Crusaders who were looking to finish on a high after what will be described as an unsuccessful campaign for the franchise. Nemanja Ndolo showed why he's been one of the Crusaders' top performers this season, grabbing two tries in the first half to set the Crusaders up nicely at 21 points to 11 at the break. The second 40 saw the Brumbies fight back before a penalty try in the 73rd minute sealed the win for the Crusaders. The Canterbury Rams' playoff hopes are all but over after a loss yesterday to the Nelson Giants at Cal Stadium. Needing a win to keep their finals hopes alive, the Rams didn't get off to a bright start, and after a string of questionable refereeing decisions in the second quarter, found themselves trailing by 12 at half-time. 
The game's third quarter saw the home side put together one of their best spells of the season, with the Rams taking the lead with a massive 40 points alone in the third quarter. Co-captain Ethan Rusbatch caught fire, knocking down four three-pointers on his way to 27 points. The Rams were unable to hold the lead they took into the final quarter though, with the Nelson shooters taking advantage of some wide open shots, silencing the Rams fans and all but finishing any playoff hopes the Cantabs now have. The final score at Cowles, 103-94 to to the Giants. And finally tonight, St Andrews and Timaru Boys High play their annual rugby fixture tomorrow, with Timaru playing host at Alpine Energy Stadium. The big game can be seen right here on CTV this Wednesday, with coverage of the match screening at 3pm. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Findlater for CTV Sport. Thanks, Gordon. And if you've got a local sports story you think our newsroom needs to know about, you can always email the news team. In fact, you can do it right now if you like. News at ctv.co.nz. And just a quick reminder, we are also broadcasting and streaming live at ctv.co.nz. So will it snow, will it not snow? It's time now for the all-important regional weather forecast. Good evening Canterbury, well a very cold start to the week this week with snow falling inland to 300 metres and Banks Peninsula 500 metres but let's take a look at today's highs, Waimati up to Geraldine 9 degrees today, Twizel just on 7. Further north now, uh, 9s and 10s here for this part of the region. Ashburn and Leiston and Christchurch on 10 degrees. Methven, Darfield and Akara are just 9 for you with some light cloud here and there. To North Canterbury now, uh, some of you reached the double ditches with Rangiora and Cheviot on 10 degrees. Uh, everyone else here, kind of cold in 9 degrees and 8 for Oxford, Amberley and Hamden Springs. And as we take a look now at Arthur's Pass, just 4 degrees today. Right, the major centres now for tomorrow. Timaru we start off with, minus 2 degrees will start your day with some southwesterly winds and cloud here and there. You'll reach a high of 8 degrees. As for Christchurch, slightly warmer on 9 degrees and slightly warmer too to start off the day on minus 1. Southwesterly winds and some cloudy skies as well. Christchurch, very similar picture to Ashburn, and in fact, 9 degrees for you and minus 1 to start off the day. Southwesterly winds and cake colder tomorrow. A start of the day a slightly warmer on 3. Those southwesterly winds will still be with you with some cloudy skies and 9 degrees your high. The other areas around the region for tomorrow now. 9 degrees will be your high again tomorrow for Waimati up to Geraldine and just 6 for Twizel starting off on minus 4 degrees, bit chilly indeed. Everyone here uh, further inland for Methven and Darfield you will on minus 3 degrees but Akaroa here, get rid of the minus, you're just having 3 degrees to start the day with some southwesterly winds for everyone. Very similar here as well, everyone starts off in the negatives, uh, minus 3 for Oxford and minus 1 for Amberley and Cheviot as well. And in the Alpine region there will be some sunny skies, but calm for other places here and just minus 4 degrees. Right, the upcoming days now for the major centres. 9 degrees for Timaru, Ashburn and Christchurch with some fine spouts here and there. Kaikoldo you'll be on 13 degrees. As we flip over to Thursday now, those showers will start coming through for Timaru, Ashburn and Christchurch. Kaikoldo you just escape all that sort of showers and stick with the cloud. 13 degrees. The next few days for the rest of the region now on Wednesday. Um, sunny skies here and there with some just a few cloudy patches in the middle here. Winds will be kind of calm, not too not too um, heavy, uh, full on indeed. But as for Thursday though, those southerly winds will be coming through which will bring those showery skies for most parts of the southern part of the region. Then a bit of cloud here and there and then showers as we move further up the region. So a very cold few days indeed to make sure you wrap up warm. But for now that is your weather for Monday. Thanks Jared, and that is CTV News for your Monday. Have a great evening. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.